She featured, not heavily, but she was featured in a, a documentary called Cocaine Cowboys. Um, and as an actor, it, there's a frustrating trait that I'm, I read a book, I'm looking for a character to play. I, I, you know, I see something on TV, I read something in the newspaper, and sometimes I physically have to say, stop it. Just watch, read, and for, not thinking about that. But with her, fascinated me because she was a woman who came from nowhere, the slums of Medellin, Colombia, who built up the biggest empire in the drug world, um, was the most powerful, the most revered, the most feared um, gang leader of the drug trade in Miami in the 70s, the height of um, the drug um, business, and she was a woman and how did she live so long in that world and how did she get so much success in that world. That in itself as an actor is like something you want to, want to play and for me to um, strip away, get under the skin of such a woman was something I became kind of obsessed with and I'm so happy that I got the chance to do it the way that I wanted to do it. Um, in a medium in television um, where I know people, a lot of people are going to see it, um, not just in, in America. And I'm always fascinated about great stories and great stories about women are something that, of course, um, I gravitate to. I always prepare um, pretty much the same for whether I'm doing theater, whether I'm doing television, whether I'm doing a, a film. Um, I, I think that comes from theater training, you know, being studying in the theater. With Griselda, there wasn't a lot of real footage. There were a lot of mug shots that didn't represent her, um, showed her at her most full-on evil and um, ugly, I have to say. Um, so I didn't want to do a caricature of that. Um, like I said, I wanted to get under the skin of her and I read anything and everything that could have been, that was been written about her and came up with the idea that, um, you know, in movies in general in, or television, you try to humanize a character who hasn't a human trait that you relate to, and I don't. It's, everything is like morally wrong with her. And so, um, you know, I wanted to play her as raw as possible. I wanted to put on some weight. My body language was um, something I worked on. Her body, my body posture, my, even my Latino way of speaking and working and moving is different from what I do. Her body language was it, her it was was rooted. I wanted her rooted to the ground. That a woman who could take a punch and not really fall over, um, someone who could take pain. Um, and I think on my back, I put my back out like literally a week after I finished, and that's all from sitting and working and. Um, reaching, you know, it, it was it was physical, but I wasn't doing any stunts. It was just mentally physical and and physical in a, in a way that I've never been allowed to. Um, a lot of the characters that I've been cast in have been the character's name and description has been preceded by beautiful, sexy, glamour, you know, and it's it, it's just boring, you know, as an actor. and. Uh, for many years, I kind of got a little disheartened by that. Um, playing Griselda reminded me why I love acting. It reminded me why at nine years old I was in the theater in London, why I started, why I want to be in this world. And it was to be living in stories, of immersing myself in a story of a character that's not me, or playing somebody who's not me, you know? And I think a lot of actors, I know, anyway, and I don't speak for everybody, but there's something, there's, there's an, in, an inherent quality within us all of wanting to be, finding out, being in those just different situations, of pushing our emotions to where we've had to hide them before, of um, 
it's that's what we strive that's what turns us on that's what we want to do this job for and you don't necessarily get the opportunity so this was a real treat it was a gift for me I'm big on psychoanalyzing not just characters I play but human beings at large it's a it's it's a lifelong um, piece of work I think for all of us for her she came from the slums of Medellin it's shocking and a dangerous world that she was living you know no shoes but she had a gun you know she she was abused um, any child who was abused carries that with them for the rest of their lives um, and they're able to work through the process or it like a cancer forms into something else whether they become abusers themselves or whether they have serious mental issues related to that abuse that said there are many women many men who came from Medellin from that very same situation who didn't become Griselda Blanco yes it was circumstance yes it was greed yes there was a, a wild ambition Yes, she was able to justify her behavior for wanting to never have that happen to her kids, but she wasn't as humble as that. You know, her life was about greed, it was danger, it was about terrorizing others as she te was terrorized herself. So it's a very complex character to play. Um, her emotions, I think, were always hidden but deep. And I, and I, at certain points in the movie, I dig down into those emotions and try and show them that it's, um, you know, when the, when the, when the, the, her fragility, when she starts to crack, you really see fragile parts of her character, which she was never allowed to show. And I think women today are always frightened to show that beautiful quality called vulnerability. We have to hide it because it makes us look weak or it's a sign for being able to be abused or it gives the red light to others that I can be talked down to or trampled on or beat. It's a very hard um, lesson to teach my daughter. The beauty of being vulnerable, the beauty of, um, of a childhood innocence that as an actress, I've never lost because I can live in fantasy worlds. I can I can deep dip my feet into worlds that are so different from my existence. People as beautiful and glamorous in a world that you know one would think would be perfect, but in fact it's not. Or to the dark black side, the sad, abusive physically violent side of Griselda, you know, so the, the beauty of vulnerability should never be lost in women um, and it's trying to teach my 14 year old daughter that you have, we have to learn and we have to be pre-programmed to understand that not everyone thinks as vulnerability is a beautiful quality.